Good day everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel once again. So today I'm going to discuss about undefined terms, definitions, postulates, and theorems. So ito yung mga terms na kakailanganin natin para sa mga susunod na lessons natin. Kaya uh, take note and i-master natin or try to be familiarized with the following terms. Okay, so let's talk about undefined terms. So there are actually three undefined terms in geometry, namely point, line, and a plane. So what is all about a point? So we define point as the most fundamental object in geometry. It is presented by a dot and named by a capital letter, and a point represents position, and it has no dimension. So for example, we have this one, it's a plane. Then we have their point A, point B, and point C. So as you can see, yung point natin, yung dots natin, ay nakasulat yung kanilang names ng by capital letters. Okay? So dapat pag pinangalanan daw natin yung point natin, it should be capital letters. Next, we have line. So it can be thought of as a connected set of infinitely many points. And it extends infinitely far in two opposite directions. So a line has one dimension only. So for example, we have this one. Okay, so we have two ways to name our line. So we have the first one. So this is line DE. Or we can also name that as, uh, in symbol, we have DE, then dun sa taas niya is that yung symbol ng line natin. So, meron siyang dalawang aro sa dulo. So, that is line DE. No? Yung second na illustration natin, as you can see, we name this as line L. Okay? So, the next one, we have plane. So, may be considered as an infinite set of points forming a connected flat surface extending infinitely far in all directions. A plane has two dimensions and it is usually represented in drawings by a four-sided figure. So, for example, we have this one. Okay, so, that is plane A. Then, the second one, we have plane B. Okay, so, yung examples natin for point is um, tulad ng mall. Then, we have um, tip of a pen. So, yun yung mga example ng points. For line, tulad ng string. And then for a plane, to ng sa surface ng table, no, or dun sa floor natin. So those are examples of point, line, and a plane. Okay, so let's have this um, definition of terms. So these are the terms that we need dun sa mga susunod na lesson natin. So kailangan mafamiliarize kayo dito sa mga terms na to. So first one, we have segment, or this is a line segment. So we define this as the union of point A and B and all the points between them. So A and B are called the endpoints of the segment. So ito yung pinatawag natin on a segment. So you have um, point A at saka point B. So yung difference nito doon sa line natin at saka line, pag sinabing line, saka line segment, pag line segment is meron siyang hangganan. No, unlike dun sa kapag line, Dun sa figure natin, meron siyang two arrows na ibig sabihin nun ay extended no, infinitely. So, we name this one as segment AB or we denote this as, opihin mo yung letters, we have AD, then mag-drawing ka ng symbol na segmented line or segment doon sa taas niya. No? So, pwede rin magkabaliktad. So, you have line segment AB and then line segment BA. Okay? Next one, we have the collinear points. So, yung collinear points natin, when points are on the same line. No? So, ayan, collinear points. So, this is an example of the collinear points. So, meron tayong points, uh, points B, D, E, and F. So, they lie on the same line. So, that's why we call them as collinear points. And then, the second one, we have coplanar points. For itself, we have when points are on the same plane. So, yan, planar points. So, for example, we have this plane, then all the points are inside our plane. So, you have points A, B, C, and D. So, this is what we call coplanar points. 
Okay, so the next one is a ray. So any of a set of straight lines passing through one point. So this is an example of a ray. Next, we have angle. So it's the union of two non-collinear rays with a common endpoint. So meron tayong dalawang rays daw. So this is an example of one ray, then the second ray. So ito yung magiging common endpoint niya and nakaka-form siya ng isang angle. Ayan. So we name this one as angle IHJ or JHI or we have angle H. Okay, so we have congruent angles. So two angles are congruent if and only if their measures are equal. So congruent means they are the same. Okay, for example, if the uh, first angle is 30 degrees, the other angle should also be 30 degrees. So parehas sila. Next, we have kinds of angles. First one is acute angle. So it is an angle with a measure greater than 0 degrees but less than 90 degrees. So yung angle natin start tayo ng 1 up to 89 degrees. So ang tawag natin dun ay acute angle. Next, we have right angle. So it is an angle with a measure exactly of 90 degrees. So kakaisa lang ito, basta kapag yung angle natin is exactong 90 degrees yung sukat, we call that as right angle. Next one, we have the obtuse angle. So, nag start yung obtuse angle natin pag um, greater than 90 degrees na siya but should be less than 180 degrees. So, for example, we have 110 degrees. So, that is an obtuse angle. Kapag 32 degrees, that is an acute angle. Pag 90 degrees, so syempre, isa lang yun, we have right angle. Uh, 95 degrees, so greater than 90 na siya, so that is obtuse angle. Okay? So next, we have adjacent angles. So adjacent angles are two angles which have a common vertex and a common side, but have no interior points in common. So this is an example of an adjacent angles. So ito yung kanilang common vertex, which is point H. Then yung common side nila, itong um, HJ na to. Okay, so ito yung common side. No? So yung angle IHJ ay adjacent siya dito sa angle JHK. Okay? Okay, so next we have complementary angles. So kailan natin masasabi na yung angles natin are complementary. So two angles are complementary if the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. And each angle is called the complement of the other. So, for example, we have this one. So, the first angle is 50 degrees and the second angle is 40 degrees. So, pag pinag-sum natin yan, 50 plus 40 is equal to 90 degrees. So, tawag natin dyan, complementary angles. So, other one is that we have 60 degrees, then the other one is 30 degrees. So, pag pinag-sum natin yun, 60 plus 30, that is equal to 90 degrees. So, still, they are complementary angles. Next, we have supplementary angles. So, kailan naman natin masasabi na yung dalawang angle natin ay supplementary? So, two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So, each angle is called the supplement of the other. So, this is an example. So, let's say yung first angle natin is 50 degrees and the other one is equal to 130 degrees. So, pag pinag-sum natin yan, 30, or 130 plus 50, that is equal to 180 degrees. So, 180 degrees yung sum niya. So, ibig sabihin nun, yung dalawang angles natin ay supplementary. No? So, another example, let's say 110 degrees yung isa, then the other one is 70 degrees. So, 110 plus 70, so that is equal to 180, so that is supplementary angle. Okay? Next, we have linear pairs. So, kailan natin masasabi na yung dalawang angle natin are linear pairs? So, two angles form a linear pair if and only if they are adjacent and their uncommon sides form a straight line. So, ito yung sinasabi na their uncommon sides. So, ito yung first angle. Then, this is our second angle. So, adjacent sila. 
So, ibig sabihin ang tawag dito ay linear pairs. Okay? So, para masabi din na linear pairs ito, dapat yung sukat ng total na angle nila is equal to 180 degrees. Okay? So, for example, this is 150 degrees. Then, the other one is 30 degrees. So, pag pinagsam natin yan, so 150 plus 30 is equal to 180 degrees. So, adjacent sila or ibig sabihin magkatabi. Then, nagpo-form siya ng kanyang uncommon side na straight line. Okay? So, that is linear pair. We have also vertical angles. So, two angles are vertical angles if and only if they form by two intersecting lines and they are non-adjacent. So, this is an example. For example, this is our first line. Then, this is our second line. So, nag intersect sila. So, saan dito yung vertical angles natin? So, dapat daw, they are non-adjacent or hindi sila magkatabi. So, for example, we have this angle 1. So, ang kanyang ka-vertical angle ay dito. Okay? So, angle 1 and angle 2. Then, they are vertical angles. Then, yung natitira natin, we have angle 3 and angle 4. Yun yung kanyang vertical angles. Okay? Next, we have polygon. So, it is the union of three or more coplanar segments which intersect at endpoints, then which each endpoint shared by only two non-collinear segments. We also have a triangle, so it's a basic figure or shape. It is a fo figure formed by three segments joining three non-collinear points. So, that is our triangle. So, yung three non-collinear points na yun, ito. So, you have point A, point B, and point C. Next, we have kinds of triangle. So, we have acute triangle. So, ang acute triangle natin is a triangle in which all angles are acute. So, di ba sabi natin, pag acute, dapat yung degree niya is equal to uh, or greater than 0 degrees but less than 90 degrees. So, for example, we have this triangle, then yung, then yung mga angles nila ay below 90 degrees. So, let's say 50, then the other one is 50, then you also have 80. So, below 90 degrees, so lahat yung acute angle. So, dapat pag pinagsam mo din lahat ng angles na yan is also 180 degrees. So, 80 plus 50 plus 50 is equal to 180. Kasi take note, ang total na sukat ng angle natin kapag sinabing triangle should be exactly 180 degrees. Okay? So, once again, so lahat ng angle niya ay acute, kaya ang tawag natin dito ay acute triangle. Next, right triangle. So, ayan, pag right triangle naman, is a triangle in which one of the angles is a right angle. So, di ba kapag right angle should be 90 degrees. So, this is an example of a right triangle. So, we have 60 and 30. Then, yung remaining dapat ay 90 degrees. Yan. Kaya, ang tawag natin dito, meron siyang 90 degrees, may right angle. So, ang tawag natin ay right triangle. So, ganun pa rin. Pag pinagsam natin ito, ang kanyang total ay 180 degrees. Diba? So, 60 plus 30 is 90. Then, 90 plus 90 is 180. Next, we have obtuse triangle. So, pag sinabing obtuse triangle, we have one of the angles is obtuse. So, dapat may sukat na greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. So, for example, we have 20 and 30. Then, yung remaining angle is 130. So, that this is an obtuse angle. So, ibig sabihin nun, ito ay obtuse triangle. No? So, pag pinagsam pa rin yan, dapat 180 degrees. Okay? So, wrap up natin. Pag sinabing acute triangle, lahat ng given angles are acute. So, below 90. Then, pag right triangle, isa sa mga angles niya ay 90 degrees. Then, for obtuse triangle naman, isa sa mga angles na given should be obtuse angle. Okay? So, let's have equiangular triangle. So, it is an equiangular triangle if all the given angles are congruent. 
So, for example, ito yung triangle natin, tapos yung mga given angles niya ay pare-parehas. So, you have 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. So, ang tawag dito ay equiangular triangle. So, take note, yung sum pa rin niya dapat ay 180 degrees. Now, let's talk about um, identifying the triangle according to sides. So, the first one is scalene triangle. So, kailan natin masasabi na yung triangle based dun sa sides on na given ay isang scalene triangle. So, in definition niya, it is a triangle with no congruent sides. So, ibig sabihin, iba-iba yung, yung sukat nung sides ng triangle natin. So, for example, we have this one. So, as you can see, this side is not equal to this side. And then, the third side also is not equal. So, iba-iba yung sukat ng sides nila. For example, ito ay 5, 6, then 7. So, ang tawag dun sa triangle na yan ay scalene triangle. Next, we also have the isosceles triangle. So, kailan naman masasabi na yung triangle ay isang isosceles based dun sa kanyang given sides. So, for example, on definition, it is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. So, for example, ito yung triangle natin. So, let's say this one is congruent to that side. And then, yung baba niya ay hindi pareha. So, let's say ito ay 10. Then, ito ay 10. So, 10 at saka 10 yan. So, pareha sila. Then, yung nasa baba niya is 15. So, 10, 10, 15. So, dalawa yung sides na magkapareha. So, ang tawag sa kanya ay isosceles triangle. Next, we have the equilateral triangle. So, kailan naman natin masasabi na yung triangle natin ay isang equilateral. So, is a triangle in which all sides are congruent. So, pare-parehas yung kanyang sides. So, for example, ito yung triangle natin. So, lahat ng kanyang mga given sides ay pare-parehas. So, let's say ito ay 5. Ito dapat ay 5 din. Then, ito rin dapat ay 5. Okay? Kaya, ang tawag dyan ay equilateral triangle. Next, we have we have the postulate. So, ang postulate natin, it is a statement which is accepted as true without a proof. Okay? So, ang tawag daw natin doon ay postulate. Then, the last one is the word theorem. So, theorem is defined as a statement that needs to be proven. So, yung mga sinasabi mo, kailangan i-prove pa so, ang tawag doon ay theorem. Okay? So, we're going to have the applications of this, uh, of these terms and concepts sa mga susunod natin na lesson. Okay? So, we also have the different quadrilaterals. So, first one is the trapezoid. It is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And the other one, we have parallelogram. It is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Then rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. Then we also have rhombus. It is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. And then lastly, we have square. It is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four, that is four, congruent angles. Okay? So, you can also search sa ating internet yung mga figures na ito. So, we have trapezoid, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and square. Okay? So, that is all about undefined terms, definition of terms, postulate, and theorem. So, for the postulate and theorem, that is just the definition We'll try to have either another or other video lessons talking about the, the postulates and theorems. So, we'll tayo ng mga examples doon. And then, yung mga, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, yung mga terms no, na, na binanggit natin dito, kailangan ma-familiarize kayo kasi kakailanganin natin itong mga terms na ito dun sa mga susunod na lessons natin. Okay? So, for this time, thank you for watching and keep safe.